I'm Chris. I'm Chelsea. I'm Max. This is what happens when you give three kids at heart the keys to the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. No kids allowed. Check it out. is here looks like somebody put some Legos up where your dipstick should have been. Imagine what we could discover at play. Discover what we could imagine today. Come with me to where the rainbow is. That's where our magical journey begins. Serious one. With hands on learning, come on everyone. She's not lying. I think I lost my pancreas. Well, folks, we're in the funnest place in the city, and I would even venture to say in the state and probably the whole world after the amount of fun we've been having. We're at the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. I am here with Executive Director Joanne Morrell. How are you doing, Joanne? Great. That, thanks for that introduction, Chris. Yeah. We're thrilled to have you here. <laughs> well, it's been a blast, actually. I mean, I, we've been here without the kids because we came after hours. You know, we didn't want to be in anybody's way or anything, but uh, we've really totally had the time of our lives here, and I... I wish there was some place like this when I was a little kid growing up. I just know how magical it is for those kids. Thank you. You know, we hear that a lot. That, yeah. why, yeah. why is it here? How did it start? Tell us a little bit about the background behind it. Well, um, you know, it was the right time and the right location, and it all kind of came together. We had an amazing team of champions who brought this to Topeka with uh, Susan and Kent Garlinghouse leading the charge and our founding board incredible group of passionate and dedicated people who just kept at it until we could get it done. And how long ago did the idea of this kind of come together? Right, so we started our planning in about 2005 and incorporated in 2006 and we kicked off our fundraising in 2007 and a lot of people don't realize that it was going on that whole time and we were very quiet and building our um, case and our uh, great founding donors who came on and supported us and then in 2009 we had the maybe challenge and so that really caught a lot of attention and then we broke all sorts of fundraising records with people coming on with gifts of all sizes to help us meet that maybe challenge. Sure. And then we broke ground in 2010 and opened in 2011. And so here we are. I got to ask, how much money did you have to raise to build this facility? Well, the total campaign was about, uh, we started with a $5 million campaign. Yep. And we were going to do it in phases. And then we ended up raising $7.5 million. And we're growing from there to ex expand the outdoor learning adventure. $7.5 million. I think it's... It's really, can we do a high five on the 7.5? I 7. think we can. All uh, right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we we just did a special over with the Helping Hands Humane Shelter, and right. they raised an incredibly large amount of money around that much for for their facility. And you see a facility like this here. For, you know, we're we're a very generous community in Topeka. Absolutely, there is. It is the most giving community, and. Um, when people see the need and know that needs to be done, they step forward to make it happen. And Topeka was one of only like six capital cities. And by the time we opened five capital cities that didn't have one. And for a community our size, it's just, you know, that's not okay. Yeah. And so it was always about more than just bringing a children's museum to Topeka and the region. It was really about economic development, quality of life, and having a great place for young families to spend quality time together. Sure, absolutely. So, so explain how business operates around here. You know, people are coming in the front door. You know, what 
what times are people coming? Are, are they coming with schools? Are they coming with their families? Right. Just kind of a little rundown on that. All of that. We uh -huh. have everything from families who come for special programming, mm -hmm. for field trips, birthday parties, and um, all throughout the day. So it's a wide mix and a wide uh, group of ages. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it was really important to us to serve our education community and be a resource for them. So um, hands-on interactive applications of what the teachers were um, teaching in the classroom, so to right. support our area teachers. And so we have a lot of field trips wow. and we have a lot of uh, special programming that we do in um, weekend events and you know after hours events so you know everything from chamber after hours to private parties we had a private birthday party here last night family came from Holton wow. and you know it's just a really great uh, it's a community center yeah and for people from all over Northeast Kansas and Kansas absolutely you know, over to this place it's just these exhibits and everything that you have here how are they all dreamed up Right. Okay. Great question. We did a lot of research. The founding board, when we were planning the, you know, developing the vision for this, we researched and visited children's museums across the entire country because why uh, reinvent the wheel? Right. Let's learn from their mistakes and lessons learned. So they were so generous and um, gave us a lot of great information in terms of um, what's educational and um, the, what the kids love and what their favorite exhibit is. And so when we went, they said, okay, well, if you do this exhibit, do it differently because here's how we'd improve it. Mm -hmm. So we have the advantage of having the best of the best from children's museums all over the country that we visited and talked to their staff and executive director on lessons learned. So there are people that not only come from Kansas, but you have guests from all over the place. Tell us a little bit about the reach and, and what we're actually drawing to Topeka. That's right. So um, a majority of our visitors come from Shawnee County, mm -hmm. but we are continually drawing visitors from all over Kansas. It's mm -hmm. like 288 Kansas communities who have visited wow. and then all 50 states plus 15 foreign countries. So from all over the world. 15 foreign countries yes. to the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. I yes. That's really cool. That's yeah. very, very cool. So it is exciting. And, and, we, and we see people who are traveling through and, and making stops so they can have a, a great um, experience for their kids while they're traveling and give them a little break. And, and then people who seek us out. We had a family who came up from Wichita just last week for a special puzzle pieces program, which is a program for families with children with autism. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So how do people find out about all the events and all the happenings that you guys have going on here? at the? the well, the best center? place is to either uh, join us on Facebook, mm -hmm. so you get alerts for that, and then also our website, which is kansasdiscovery, all spelled out, dot org. We'll put that right on the screen. Right all right. Now, so everybody can see. Wonderful. You know, a lot of other communities have something like this, not in this area. Right. So you did have something to kind of learn from. The right. There's about 300 children's museums across the United States. When we looked at what they were doing, um, you know, we took that very seriously in terms of making sure that every exhibit was both serious and fun. Mm -hmm. So we had the educational aspect, but then it also naturally drew the children and adults because it's important for the adults who are bringing the kids to have a good time. Absolutely. And watching you guys today, I mean, you know, <laughs> that that's a good testament too that we hit the mark on adults having fun. <laughs> and you know, the bike path outside and the, the adults like to paint in the art pavilion and, and help build in the build workshop. So, it, you know, that's always been an important part of what we were doing so that the whole family has a really great time together. And I was really impressed with the outdoor area as well, from the treehouse to just everything. I mean, I, I went down the slide and put my foot in a bunch of mud, but it was great. It was good fun. I mean, if I don't feel like I'm having getting a little dirty, I'm not having fun. Right. Oh, and kids do love to get dirty. Yeah, they do. And so whether it's painting in the art pavilion or digging in the, um, the dirt, um, the interactive sensory gardens that we have outside and really just having a great time. Um, it's important for kids to get dirty. Yeah, get it a really little messy. Is. It really is. Well, uh, Joanne, I, I want to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to do some business here with the TV station. Uh, but when we come back, uh, would you be willing to show us around the place and kind of Absolutely. explain some of the exhibits I'd love to us? To. All right. Well, folks, you know what's coming up, so don't go away. Well, we're back and we are doing a tour of the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. Joanne Morrell is going to be taking us all around this place and showing us all about it. 
Well, Chris, there's so much to show you in so little time. So we're going to pick the favorite exhibits that you want to see to highlight on your tour. Okay? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So we're transported inside the Ribbon Playhouse in the toddler area. Tell us all about this. Yes. Well, one of the first exhibits that you come upon is the toddler grow area. And this fabulous playhouse, Ribbon Playhouse, was designed by founding board member Joanne Harrison. And isn't it fabulous? The kids love it. And we actually have a really good, several really good stories about uh, people working on stickers and earning their good deeds to come play in the Ribbon Playhouse. It's that popular. I love it. And I love Joanne Harrison. I, I have know. to throw a plug in for her. She's great. She's <laughs> great. So the, the toddler area is really important because we have all sorts of good uh, creative play, brain development, developing strong neural pathways. And um, this is a really important age for kids. Okay, so we're, we're magically transported over here by something that looks like a heating and cooling guy's nightmare. Uh, and But it looks like a whole lot of fun. Tell me what this is. It is. This is our fabulous air maze. And on the wall, you can see all about the scientific method and the different things that the kids can test in the air maze. But mostly for the little guys, it's just a lot of fun. So, Chris, I'm going to demonstrate and you try to keep up, okay? Okay, all I'm right, ready. Here we go. All right, so we put it in. Whoa, hey, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna switch directions here. <laughs> see if you can see where they go now. Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. Yeah. How cool. How cool. So the kids get to uh, put objects into the air maze and change the direction. So they experiment with uh, different weight, size, texture, velocity, and the principles of wind. And there's great scientific learning that goes into it. But as I said, it's a lot of fun too. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I would have definitely given this thing a workout when I was a kid. So there are several stations here for careers. Tell right. us a little bit about these. Right. Careers is very popular. We have medical, amazing me medical area, the vet, the cafe, and then the auto repair shop. And then also financial literacy, Moneyville kind of um, caps the end of the careers area. So this is a very popular uh, pretend area for kids. They love play or role playing as adults and they learn how to change a tire. And you've got to, you've got to check out the car, Chris. I'm checking it out right now. All all right, change the oil. Okay. Change the filter. Awesome. Yep, so lots of fun. You can rotate the tires. Cool. So this is build area. I see like tools and stuff. Yeah, Tell it's them. the Real Tools Workshop and it's hugely popular. So kids come in here with their adult and they saw and they hammer and then doo -doo 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 -doo. hey look it's magic yes very cool this. very cool and these are some of the look projects what I built. Do, do they get to keep these or take them home with they them, do or? they That's... keep them and then some of the kids want their things to be on display as examples for others sure so they leave them here and kids don't get to do this. I mean, you know, when I was a girl, I went down to my dad's workshop and we did this, but a lot of families don't have shops and workshops anymore. I know my kids don't have that at home, so they get to come here and do it. So do not adjust your television sets. The color in this room is very vibrant. Uh, tell us a little bit about this room where you get a paint on the walls. Yes, so the kids have a great time in here. We do all sorts of creative things with paint and color mixing and the science of art, and it is one of the most popular areas that we have. Well, it's darn cool, and you have a lovely uh, uh, painted on the glass, uh, probably the best logo I've ever seen. Yeah, that's that's good branding. <laughs> and um, lucky for you that I didn't design your logo, if that's what it was going to look like. But, um, you know, we, we do have a lot of fun in here and great volunteers who work with the kids. And um, this is really, you know, with the light coming in from the windows and the colored glass, it's always a different experience. And we have different art projects that go on throughout the month and the year that um, inspire and challenge the kids. Uh, it's just an awesome room. I, I can't even imagine where the idea was thought of, but I'm sure glad well, it was. Well, again, we copied from others and they said, hey, do it differently and ha here's how you do it better. So we have one of the best art pavilion, paint pavilions in the nation. 
Right here, you gotta see it at the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. So what is this thing? This is totally cool. This is the Kansas Grain Pit, and it is a wonderful way for kids to interact together. It's collaborative and cooperative play, and they use augers and conveyors and scoops and pulleys. And so there's some really great learning principles that go into this, and we've recruited Carolyn Chen Lewis, our Director of Operations, to help us in this wonderful simulation. Right. So kids it work- Village, right? Yes, it <laughs> takes a village. It is. Exactly. Totally and yeah. kids them about what each piece is part of the whole. Excellent, excellent. And um, kids will get uh, sweaty. They will come away from this just drenched in sweat. They're very serious about their work. And we need more grain here and keep the grain going. And it's a lot of fun. So, how does this thing work? Like, where do we start? Okay, so. Um, you start here with the scoops, or I could do the okay, scoops. Okay. And so that'll go up, and then uh, we'll do the auger. And you can do both of these at the same time. So you got the augers to fill up the scoops, and then the scoops to go down on the conveyor, and the bucket to pull up and add more to the conveyor. And so the kids all work together doing this. Okay, right. one person will be filling the bucket up, and that's you, Chris. You're going to fill it, that I'm bucket. It, it and up. you tell me when you're ready to, for me I to will. pull it up. I'll pull it. Go ahead and pull it up. Okay, right, here, we here we go. We're oh, pulling it up. Oh, we pulling right. it up. And then we're falling out. And then it's going to the conveyor belt. And then there you need to start moving the conveyor belt. So I'm coming over here. Over yep. to here. This is the conveyor belt. Then you're going to move that grain that so you I'm just cranking now. It all the way around. There you right. go. And it's going to go down into the second bin, all the way. All right. And then someone is doing this. That's that's two people. Then that's okay. the third person. Then you have that fourth one cranking doing this, augering it, just moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it. And this bin is the third bin, which really. You are the manager of the whole thing because you're the one that knows if this gets too full, it stops the whole process. All right. So you want to make sure that all the grain is moving out of this by the cups and then it's going back to the first bin. So I always tell the kids when they're doing this, you guys are in charge. You need to make sure that there's enough grain in here and not too much because once there's too much, the whole thing stops. <laughs> okay. Hard it's hard work. Well, uh, let's go to the next spot. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that makes this place really unique is the fact that it's located in a city park. So you have a little bit more uh, freedom that you can do things with and in conjunction with the city. Tell us a little bit about that the relationship. Absolutely. You know, that has been just the most incredible thing, having the city's commitment. And now we're partnering with uh, Shawnee County Parks and Recreation. And, you know, they really saw the vision and um, understood the need for having it in a, uh, a place where families with young children go. So our city council and Mayor Button and everybody who had the vision to make this happen, you know, really, uh, truly a great thing for Topeka. So we have four and a half acres of outdoor learning adventure that is a part of the Discovery Center. And we're on actually nine acres within Gage Park. So it's just a great community asset and we're so happy to be here. Absolutely. Let's go outside and check it out. Okay. So the telltale sign of construction and growth is orange fencing. Right. Uh, so we've got some of that out here and there's some really exciting things happening and you're giving us a sneak peek. Exactly. You're one of the first to see our coming soon. It'll open on June 1st, our outdoor water adventure. This is the bog, the natural water filtration system with our waterfall. And you can see that the kids can experiment with boats and flow and all of the great learning principles all the way down as they go down to the bottom pond and um, their stepping stones so they can walk across it, really connect with nature and their uh, wildlife will be present. The crews are working really hard to stay on our June 1st deadline when we open to the public. And there will also be coming later in the summer, a pagoda for programming and a red bridge. And so kids can fish off the bridge and experiments with canoes and kayaks as they go down the stream and um, wonderful, opportunities to interact with nature.
This is so cool. Mother Nature called and she wants her rapids back. Exactly. You know, um, I have to say that when we come out here and um, it's so peaceful and really you are in the middle of a natural stream and they have done an amazing job. Anything aquatic and um, complete aquatics have worked so hard on this. And we, we were able to do this through a grant from the Association of Children's Museums for a Going Wild grant. And this all started the vision for this. It's the family treasure garden dedicated to Garbo Lay. And we are so pleased to have this for the children of Northeast Kansas. It's going to be fantastic. Chris, as you can see in the bottom of the stream, we have ornamental designs, ginkgo leaves and koi fish and dragonflies and little things that they can discover along the way. So I totally feel like I'm in the movie The Lion King right now. This is totally cool and there's more development happening with this area. Tell us about it. That's right. So the rock climbing area is going to expand at the end of the summer. It'll be 30 feet by 15 feet by 8 feet and it'll have stratigraphic layers of Kansas with a granite outcropping and kids will be able to see fossils in the rocks. So it's going to be amazing and lots of fun. And uh, around the perimeter is a single track deer trail that was funded by the North Face Foundation and they helped us do some of this great outdoor adventure and just the people who have come forward and the volunteers to make all of this happen I mean it's just been a really incredible thing this is and when will this area be open like when, when it's all finished right so we will continue to expand the outdoor learning adventure as we get additional funding and volunteers who help make that happen and so the outdoor space is open year-round and the water will open june 1st and the rock area will be completed at the end of the summer and more to come this place keeps getting bigger and better i love it it's yeah. very good these are giant wind chimes i love it yes and this was an Eagle Scout project, one of about six that have helped build the outdoor learning adventure. Really great partnership with the Scouts. And of course, right around the corner, we have got something that was new last year, which is very exciting. It's the treehouse. Yes, the treetop treehouse that was designed by Chris York. And what an incredible asset to the Discovery Center that came from a Topeka native. So Chris has studied um, with the world's premier treehouse designers and then built this for us, designed it. And then we had a great team, West Star Green Team, Builder Bees, 23 30 club they all came out to build this in four days can you believe that four days all made in four days what a cool accomplishment i again i love topeka what can i say i love topeka <laughs> well joanne we have had the time of our lives here today thank you so much for having us around and letting us play with all the awesome stuff here that you have thank you for coming it has been great to have you lots of fun really been looking forward to this and talk about topeka <laughs> so if you have watched this episode and you haven't brought your kids to the Kansas Children's Discovery Center, you better or I'm going to come and get you out of your house and make you take your kids here. It's really a wonderful place and we will definitely be back. Anytime I know the little ones running around, they're going to be coming here. You're welcome to come back anytime. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Thanks again to Joanne Morell and everyone at the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. It truly was serious fun. You can comment on tonight's episode or anything else through our website or through these links. But seriously, get your kids down to the Kansas Children's Discovery Center right now. Well, not right now. We might be closed. Like, you should get on their website and find out when their hours are or something. You know, just do that. But get your kids down there. Tonight's episode was brought to you by the WIBW channels and The Break Room. Find out about their next show, Dale Easton's The Drunkard, at breakroomdowntown.com. I'm Chris Schultz. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.